And joining us on the Southwest Air and Heat Hotline, our esteemed Senator James Langford, live from Washington. Good morning, Senator. Hey, good morning to you as well. Thanks so much for joining us. First of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of all the normal citizens of Oklahoma for that weird uh, failed censor vote uh, in, from some Oklahoma rogue Republicans the other day. They tried to censor you and your fellow uh, senator. That was the craziest thing I've ever heard. You know what? We got a big tent party, and uh, it, it, we have a lot of people with a lot of opinions on it, and there were about 90 people in the state that were mad. And uh, they wanted to be able to express that they're angry. That's fine. Uh, again, we, I, I, I get most frustrated when everybody tries to say, I'm sorry, we have to all think exactly alike, uh, whether you're in Tulsa or whether you're in Elk City or whether you're in Broken Bow or in Kenton and, and, and Guyman. We have to all think exactly the same. That, that just bothers me. Uh, we are conservatives. We believe in limited government. We believe in freedom of the individual rights to be able to choose. And that even means the right to be able to disagree. So uh, have at it. And so we'll get a chance to be able to continue to be able to allow people to be able to express their opinion. Well, so much to talk about, Senator. Uh, The Biden administration has uh, hit another milestone. We have now had more illegal people cross the border in the last month than ever in the history of this country. And the year's not over. And that's the thing that everybody's. Uh, that the Biden administration continues to say, well, it was just one month, but it's been month after month after month. Literally, March hit a record. April beat that record. May beat that record. June beat that record. And they keep saying, well, it's cyclical. What's happening is the people all over the world know that this border is open, and they and they know that Biden keeps saying, we're going to try to find a way to be able to open it more. And so they're coming. And it's not just Central America. Biden keeps saying, well, you got to look at the root causes in Central America of poverty. Over 100 countries have uh, people have crossed that border just this year. So people are literally coming from all over the world. They're paying the human smugglers. They're, they're enriching the cartels. So the Biden policy is causing people to move through the cartels, pay the cartels money uh, to be able to come to our border, challenging our law enforcement. Uh, there is a simple way to be able to handle this. President Trump had a great set of policies in place to be able to limit access to our border and to say there is a way to be able to come into our country and work. Let's do that. Do it the legal way. Go through the visa process. We're not closed to people from around the world. We're open to people from around the world as long as you do it legally. And I think that's the right way to be able to attack it. But, yeah, the Biden administration is not only not enforcing the law on the southern border, they're not enforcing the law on the interior of the country. And this has been an area that we continue to be able to press is that the Biden administration is not arresting people in the interior of the country. ICE, there's 6,000 ICE agents. There was only 3,000 arrests last month. Uh, So they're continuing to just not arrest people inside the country or at the border. And uh, I would tell you, we've already spent over a billion dollars. That's with a B. Over a billion dollars has been spent not building the wall. That's paying the contractors that have been hired to build the wall Instead of allowing them to finish building the wall, we're literally paying the contractors not to build the wall. So it just gets crazier and crazier. And why would anybody realistically be against a wall? I, I have to tell you, it is purely because they hated President Trump, because the same people that supported building the wall in 2005, it was a passing a wide bipartisan majority in 2005 when everyone saw this was just basic. Uh, You go go back to the most simple things of fences help define boundaries and borders and slow people down. And when people say if you build a 20-foot fence, people get a 21-foot ladder, that's correct. But it takes time to be able to get up a 21-foot ladder. You get video of it because it's not just a wall. It's a camera. It's lights. It's a road next to it. And so when you're climbing up that ladder, Border Patrol has got time to be able to get to you and to be able to interdict. If you've got a town like in Nogales, um, Arizona, where you've got a town of 450,000 people on the south side of the border and fencing with big gaps in it, like what you have right now, because Biden refuses to finish the the fence there. You literally have a huge town of half a million people on the south side of the border. Someone could literally just run across the border and ride in the United States, and there's no way to be able to stop them. So fences do define good boundaries, and they do slow people down and so you can interdict. And every single person you talk to on Border Patrol Customs and Border Protection will tell you we need infrastructure there to be able to slow people down, to be able to come across the border so we can deter them, stop them, or at least delay them so we can interdict them. 
We're talking with Senator uh, James Langford. And, you know, on this same point, the Biden administration seems to want to open border policy for anybody from Mexico and Central America. But yet, if there are people that are rising up in Cuba against a communist dictator, he's like, stay there. Don't come here. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's really remarkable. So people that are actually genuinely looking for freedom in Cuba, for whatever reason, the socialists here in the United States are looking at Cuba with this affectionate eye to say, if only we were more like Cuba. Uh, but the people in Cuba are saying, oh, my gosh, our economy is collapsing. We can't get food. We can't get gasoline. We live under oppression. We can't speak. They've cut off their Internet to them. And uh, all of these liberals in D.C. all have this genuine affection for Cuba. They all, all want a vacation in Cuba. They all want to be able to go down there and buy cigars in Cuba. It, it's this amazing thing to me. Like, does everyone realize the people of Cuba are oppressed and frustrated? And the reason they haven't protested more is because of what's happening right now. The people that protest end up disappearing. Uh, these thugs and gangs that work for the communist government there gather people up and they just disappear off the street. So a great threat to their lives and to their families, the people of Cuba are rising up and we should stand with the free people of Cuba for freedom. I totally agree, Senator. We hear so much about the teaching of critical race theory, and and it really breaks my heart that some people think that we haven't made any strides since, uh, you know, the fight for civil rights years ago. But we've got a Joint Chiefs of Staff a general that thinks the military should be taught critical race theory. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Me. It's one thing to teach history. Absolutely, we should teach history. Absolutely, we should teach slavery. We should teach uh, what happened to the Jim Crow laws. We should teach about uh, Tulsa in 1921 and the race massacre there. All aspects of history should be taught because we can learn from that history. But we should also get what's happening in the last 100 years and how much progress that we have really made. Critical race theory basically says the the country is systemically racist and white people are to blame and they are the oppressors. And everyone who's not white, they are oppressed. And I would tell you, there are lots of folks in this country that don't like being called oppressors and lots of folks in this country that don't like being called oppressed uh, because they would say, hey, listen, my family has worked hard. They've been successful, whether they're Latino, whether they are Asian Americans, whether they're African Americans or white Americans. They engage and go, listen, I've, I, we've worked hard. We've been successful in our community. Don't tell me I'm an oppressor or I'm an oppressed just based on the color of my skin. Uh, it is a lo- Critical race theory is a long way from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s statement about judging people by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. Critical race theory says, oh, no, everything's about the color of your skin because depending on the color of your skin defines whether you're an oppressor or you're an oppressed. And I tell you, there are a lot of Americans that are pushing back on that of every color and background that are pushing back and saying, don't push this on my kids. Don't tell my kids they can't be successful because of the color of my skin. And don't tell my kids that they're an oppressor when they're in kindergarten because of the color of their skin. Uh, So rightfully so, Oklahomans are speaking out. And these are the same people that think we have to have a separate national anthem now for African-Americans. But where does it end? Do we do a national anthem for Italian-Americans, German-Americans? A football game will take like six hours to complete if we do all this. (laughs) You know, I have to tell you, for generations, uh, Americans have come from or people have come from all over the world to be Americans. We're still seeing that. You and I, just a couple of minutes ago, we're talking about how many people are trying to cross our border illegally to get into the country, while liberals in America are saying, oh, my gosh, we're a systemically racist country, and everyone should hate this country. We have 180,000 people a month now breaking into our country, trying to be able to get in to be a part of this country. We're not a systemically racist country. We're the greatest nation in the world, and there is a whole liberal progressive mindset that we're a terrible country. And if they would wake up and look around the world and talk to the rest of the world about what they think about America, they all want to be us. And so my recommendation is, yes, learn from our history. Yes, we can continue to make a more perfect union. That's been our challenge for two centuries to continue to make ourselves a more perfect union. But stop running down America. Amen to that. Senator James Lankford is our guest from Washington in just the couple of minutes that we have left. I know there are a lot of people now that, you know, COVID is, is kind of on the downward trend uh, for the most part. Uh, people are traveling now, but people are having a hard time getting their passports back, right? Why is it so backlogged? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 about uh, COVID that a lot of people uh, their passports expired uh, over the time during COVID, and now they want to be able to travel. Great, uh, glad to be able to facilitate that. But the problem is the State Department is still running a third of its staff because the State Department is not bringing all their staff in to be able to do passport applications. So we've been pounding on them. We worked with the State Department months ago during the Trump administration where the State Department was dragging their feet to be able to engage in this. We engaged with them. They they stepped up and started actually getting their job done. But once the Biden administration came in, they backed off again. And now they are just a trickle of staff that are actually coming into the office when you've got millions of people applying to be able to get their passport done. So the issue is... State Department staff need to come back to work. The rest of the country is at work. The State Department staff needs to come back to work, and the Biden administration needs to stand up and say, if you're a federal employee, by far the vast majority of them have been vaccinated, get back into work. For those that haven't been vaccinated, to be able to get social distancing and to be able to be there. But the CDC has already said we can be back at work. It's like the State Department's not even reading what the Centers for Disease Control down the street is telling them. And so we're pushing to be able to get it done. In the meantime, our staff is working their tail off behind the scenes to be able to work with State Department to be able to get as many passport applications done for Oklahomans as we can get done and trying to get them appointments in different places to be able to get it done. But this is pure and simple on the Biden administration. Even though the CDC has said it's okay for people to return to work, they're still saying, oh, no, we're going to be safe and uh, we're not going to return to work. They need to return to work because Americans deserve a government that's actually working. Need to get Anthony Blinken back to work or we'll send in winking and nod, right? Yeah, well, uh, honestly, um, I would be OK if if he is doing less, uh, but we need <laughs> the passport staff doing more. Well, Senator, always enjoy talking to you. Let's do this again. I'll make sure Harold plans another uh, week <laughs> off and, and we can chat because I always enjoy your time. Yeah, I look forward to getting a chance to chat again. Take care of folks and enjoy the rain that seems to be coming in waves in western Oklahoma. It's about to get hotter, I understand, but we we should all be grateful for hot days and thinking about the days God provided the rain. Absolutely. We're never going to complain about the rain. That's Senator James Lankford, our guest on the Southwest Air and Heat Hotline on the right time for western Oklahoma.